Okay, we're working on tiny buckles. So when we put the armor on, we got everything fixed in position for the big strap. Okay, the back strap will pivot, the front strap is nice and tight, but when you go to put it on, all of a sudden you're gonna realize, uh, I'm gonna have to reach under my arm to do a buckle. So generally you're like, I just want the buckle where I can see it because this thing that happens isn't fun. Um, so we're trying to avoid you needing an actual squire just to put your armor on. So a little bit of practicality. You gotta throw this thing on. If you've been watching all the videos, I'm sure you're tired of it, but ironically, when you get to do it, you'll realize why it happens so often. Okay. So now we're gonna just sleeve that in to the keeper. And we've got to take our strap and we go, Oh, we have tons of straps go all the way around the arm. And this is a lot. So in terms of buckling, you've got to ask yourself, how much do you need? And oftentimes you do not need all this material. Um, generally like this much, maybe three inches. Um, so you have all this extra strap and you realize you could put like a ton of tiny buckles on stuff. So we're going to make this shorter because it's a lot of work to deal with it this long. And I know for a fact that I probably only want maybe an extra inch of play while I'm dealing with this thing. And I'll be happy to muddle with the strap, but I wanna get this as close to where I can see as possible. So I'll pop that off now. And uh, as you do this, you'll get used to disassembling it while you're not looking. So we're just gonna take a little bit of material here Maybe put a hole there, trim it round, and uh, reattach it. <laughs> so just make sure to check your rotary punch so you're punching the right size hole. And go back, give yourself your extra inch. I always take the cap and just make sure I have enough for the, the cap to look nice and then to fit under. So. Bring this up to the camera. That looks good. Okay. Right there. Plenty of room. We've got our hole. Good. We can trim our radius like so. So the irony is you can make so many tiny little straps, these tiny little straps, um, to put your armor together and it's really no issue at all. So we'll pop that through and we snap it and then we're going to take our strap and go, okay, how much of this do I need and do I need to make this little buckle attachment even shorter? So I like to keep them tapered to a point. So now we know how much strap we need. It's enough to go all the way down to there. But the trick is you still have to thread it, right? So you need enough of this back arm material so that you can actually see what you're doing. So if I were to cut it short here, I still wouldn't be able to feed it in. And so what I'll do is I'll bring it out to where it's comfortable for me to see while I'm wearing it and go, okay, I can see my buckle, I can see my strap. This is everything I need. I doubt I'll need more than this. And again, you can always cut it shorter, but you can't cut it longer. So what I'll do is say, this is sufficient and just trim it while it's on me, like so. And then um, you can just pull it back out and you know you're ready to do your riveting step and then make some more permanent decisions. So once you have it off, you just make sure that your buckle is on the right spot, right? You don't want it facing the wrong direction. Take your punch, rest it on your anvil, some soft blows. And again, with your strap, same story, easy squeezy. And at this point, while I have the strap easily accessible, I take my scissors 
and I just trim it to a point, right? You just want to sit there and cut your point so you know it's going to be easy to feed in. And you can always cut it shorter as you go, but don't worry about it until you've got everything on. You just want to be able to get that puppy in there without too much effort. So I'm finding that my strap wants to swivel and I think at some point I will probably shorten it a half inch and maybe use two rivets. Um, you can disassemble your armor pretty easily once you figure out how to undo a rivet. Um, you start to really customize the fit so everything goes the way you want. So we have a nice extra probably two inches here and then it's relatively tight. Um, depending on how you want this to lay, you can push your pauldron down your arm or back up, but if your biceps change or your triceps change or your pectoral muscles are moving regularly, you're going to want that extra material there just in case. So what I'm going to do is just make a little hole punch right where the tight mark is for me. knowing full well that I can go looser if I need to by just going a little further in one direction. So we're going to lock that in place. And then again, having enough um, strap material really makes it easy to get it in the keeper. You can just tuck it under the armor. No one's going to see it. Okay. So at this point, you can start laying out your holes for the strap. I'm going to switch camera angles so you get a zoom in on that and you can get a better idea of what we're doing. But um, to try and go in and out of camera dynamics to show fitting and then assembly is a little bit tricky. So we'll talk about how to lay out the punches. But the last thing you want to do when you're wearing all your armor is move around. Make sure there's nothing you missed. You know, decide well, do I want this tighter or do I want to bring it up the breast? Do I need to trim all this material off? Or am I happy with the fact that I can move around and it's staying in the places that I need? So, you know, get in the armor, wiggle around, figure out how it works, and you can always undo the rivets if you need to. But there's your cross strap buckle and your arm strap buckle, and you can just wear it as you go.